It's about time we had a tournament in Bellator's most stacked division. It's going to be the sixth Grand Prix since the promotion's inception, but the talent housed in the lightweight roster right now has us buzzing over the possibilities. Let's inspect what a Grand Prix would actually look like at Bellator, and the lightweights most likely to take the eight guaranteed seats. First and foremost, let's listen to what boss of Bellator had to say. Scott Coker is that rare balance of fan and businessman that makes for a good fight promoter, and the trajectory he's put Bellator on in the last few years is nothing short of extraordinary. While talking to the MMA Hour last week, he told us that the lightweight Grand Prix is special. They've spent four to five years now building the current roster, trying to strike a balance between up-and-coming talent with experienced veterans. We're sure Coker is playing his cards close to his chest for now, but there's no official word on who will fight in the Grand Prix. We believe when he says they aren't short of any options, though, several of which he revealed in the same interview. Before we get to that, though, this is a good opportunity to talk about how differently Bellator operates from the UFC, a structure many of us are more familiar with. Since the promotion's launch, each division has a champion sitting at the top who only accepts worthy challengers decided by an AIM predestined method. A tournament. Eight men fight in a series of fights, often stretched out over two to three months, to determine who the number one contender is. Only then can you fight for the belt, a system many feel is more consistent and fair than UFC matchmaking policies. Let's talk about about who does it better, Bellator or the UFC. We feel like we have to take this opportunity to talk about the drastically different approaches two of the biggest MMA organizations in the world are taking. MMA is a very young sport, and for all the traction it's gotten recently, the fight promotions are fairly young too. UFC may be number one, but their matchmaking methods are becoming increasingly annoying for a community whose standards are higher than ever. Dana White says they consider popular demand and business potential when deciding matchups, and it makes for some interesting fights, but more than anything, it brings inconsistency within a professional sport that can discourage talent from joining. By contrast, the purely meritocratic format of a tournament brings a universal understanding of who stands where within a division and presents a clear path for athletes that allows them to focus purely on their game. However, the UFC model allows a fighter more room to build their own brand and earn more money, an undeniable attraction for future athletes. The proof is in the pudding, though, and while Bellator has lost a few big names to the UFC over the years, they've really worked on deepening the talent pool on their rosters. Let's look at some fighters we think will feature in the 2023 Grand Prix. Moving on, the lightweight champion, Patrick e. Pitbull. We know it's a little strange to add the current champion to a list of potential number one contenders, but he might not be champion by the time the Grand Prix rolls around. Pitbull is set to defend his championship against Usman Nurmagomedov at Bellator 288 on November 18th. We don't mean any disrespect to Patrick e or his chances of winning that fight, but in case he does lose, we can't imagine having a Grand Prix without him. He's been in the thick of the lightweight title picture for years now, and shares championship blood with former champion Patricio Pitbull. When the younger brother vacated his belt, Patrick e avenged his loss against Peter Quelly to win the belt and has held it since 2021. Let's not forget the number one contender, Usman Nurmagomedov. Another Dagestani taking the MMA world by storm is a cousin to the Eagle Khabib and is keeping the Nurmagomedov camp tradition of terrorizing the lightweight division wherever they go. Usman is 15-0 going into his first major title shot, finishing seven out of his last eight opponents. It goes without saying that he's a devil on the mat with submissions and ground and pound, but he has a much more sophisticated and fluid striking game than most Sambo-turned-mixed martial artists. He's gotten finishes with elbows, punches, and knees. This diversity of track, ranging from rear naked chokes to one-punch knockout ability, makes Usman feel like an even completer version of Khabib, aka Coach Javier Mendez, seems to agree, feeling Usman is going to win the tournament, if he doesn't win the belt first, of course. Next up, former number one contender Sidney Outlaw. Sidney came into Bellator riding an eight-fight win streak, winning his debut, but losing his second fight to Iron Mike Chandler. He's one of those fighters who stayed ranked within the top five, fight the division's best, and win a good number of those fights. Outlaw was set to fight Pitbull for the Brazilian's first title defense this year, but injuries saw that bout cancelled and fate matched Sidney against a hungry Tofik Musayev. This is a pretty unforgiving game, and Sidney never got going in that fight, getting caught by a devastating hook 27 seconds into the fight. Hey, it's happened to the best of the best in this sport. Even Kamaru Usman got caught. There's no reason to scoff at the 11-2 record the American has built since 2016, and considering fate robbed Sidney of his title shot, we feel he deserves an opportunity to at least earn the right back. Following up, MMA veteran Benson Henry 
Henderson. How can we forget Henderson? He and his magnificent mane have persisted throughout the ages of this sport's development, fighting at the top of two separate organizations. The former UFC lightweight champion has won, lost, and fought for the Bellator belt so many times now that we can't have a conversation without having him in the mix. For good reason too, by the way. You don't win 30 professional fights without picking up a thing or two. The veteran may have racked up 11 losses over the years, but those have come against monsters like two-time champion Michael Chandler, former UFC champions Anton Showtime Pettis, and Rafael Dos Anjos, and Donald Cerrone. What's more impressive is the people he's beat. Former UFC champ Frankie Edgar, Nate Diaz, Clay Guida, and current lightweight champion Patrick e. Pitbull. For those who make the argument for Benson being past his prime, we'd like to direct your attention towards his victory over division boogeyman Islam Mamadov just this year. On his day, Hendo can beat anyone, and this makes him a natural choice for a seat at the Grand Prix table. Now, for lightweight workhorse Tafik Musayev. Musayev has a Tony Ferguson quality with his work ethic and activity, fighting and winning fights all the time. Like Tony, he's built an extremely impressive long-term record by dropping only one fight since 2015, a period where he fought 19 times. His 17-fight win streak got broken against Roberto D'Souza when he got complacent for a second and got caught in a triangle choke during the first round. He bounced back by knocking out top contender Peter Queeley within 30 seconds of the starting bell. He even has a win over the current champion as recent as 2019, so we think Musayev has earned the right to be part of the Grand Prix. Moving on, Islam Mamadov definitely deserves to be in the mix. Yet another part of the wave of Dagestani fighters rising to the top of the MMA world is Russian fighter Islam Mamadov, a wrestler who's been terrorizing the Bellator lightweights for years now. Other than an extremely close decision loss to Benson Henderson, Islam hasn't tasted defeat in 12 years now, and he has fought the best at Bellator, Eagle FC, and UAE Warriors. However, Islam has said that he doesn't really relish the idea of fighting in the tournament. The Dagestani is fairly big for the weight class, and while he doesn't have a habit of missing 155 on the scale, it's a rough cut for him, which will only be made worse in the back-to-back -back fighting challenge a Grand Prix represents. Coming up, could Brent Primus take a spot? This is one of those characteristics that makes MMA mathematics so difficult. It feels disingenuous adding Henderson to this list and leaving out Primus, the man who beat him unanimously barely a year ago. Additionally, he had a razor-close fight with Islam Mamadov, proving he can't stick around with the younger generation as well. However, losing three out of his last six isn't a good look for his consistency, a quality extremely important for the Grand Prix format. Last, but certainly not least, Eddie Alvarez. This one has the potential to give the tournament the boost it needs to go from great to absolutely epic. The former UFC lightweight champion and former Bellator lightweight champion recently adopted free agency and is on his way back to the United States. Alvarez is one of the most decorated lightweights in sports history, having fought in three of the biggest MMA organizations in the world. The underground king couldn't realize championship status during his stint in Asia's one championship, but his experience and pedigree will be a great twist in the matchups. And that's a wrap for this video. Which lightweights do you think deserve a guaranteed spot in Bellator's most anticipated Grand Prix to date? If you enjoyed this video, consider helping us out and giving us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more MMA content.